Today in our workshop we've got the updated for 2021 Triumph Bonneville T120. We've got one of our tail tidies and we're going to run you through fitting it from start to finish. Before we get started though, we're going to need some tools. To get the job done, you're going to need a 10mm socket, an 8mm socket, a T27 torque spit, a small flat blade screwdriver. To use our sockets, we've got a T-bar and a ratchet, either will do. A Phillips head screwdriver, a 5mm and a 4mm Allen key, and a pair of side cutters. In the box, you'll find the card with the link to this video, part of your new rear fender, a bolt pack with a bunch of nuts and bolts, we'll go through those in a second your new tail light, the fender itself, and in the very bottom of the box, the last part of your new rear fender. The bolt pack includes four cable ties, five M6 nylock nuts, three bullet crimp connectors, five M8 bolts, two large flat M6 washers and one small M6 washer, two short countersunk M6 bolts and one long M6 countersunk bolt. Now we've got everything we need. First step is to take our key and remove the seat. Under the seat, we're going to undo this plug for the wiring to the rear harness. We're just going to use our flat blade screwdriver to lift the tab there, and then we'll just feed these out from the little clips on the rear fender. While we're here as well, we're just going to take this cable for the seat lock and just unclip that out of this little plastic bracket on the side of the rear fender as well. Next, we're going to use our T27 socket to remove the four bolts shown here. Just be careful as we remove the last bolt that the fender is going to come away from the bike, so don't let it fall to the ground. Keep these four bolts handy as we're going to use them later in the process. With the rear fender removed, we're now going to start fitting the plastic replacements that came in your kit to the bike. To make things easier, we're just going to remove the seat locking mechanism by removing the two bolts with a T27 socket. Next, take the lock cover that was supplied in the kit along with one of the M8 bolts. Place it over the lock and bolt it in place behind the shock using your 5mm Allen key. Remove these two bolts with your T27mm socket. Next we take the smaller of the two plastic parts supplied in your kit. These are the two bolts we just removed and they have a top hat washer on them. These top hat washers go in these little slots here. We then got the four bolts that we removed from the stock fender earlier. We're going to take the shorter two of those and they will go through these top hat washers. Position the fender with the rough side outwards over the top of the cable here for the seat lock and then bolt it in place using those bolts we just had. We then use our T27 to tighten them right up. This will flex the plastic plate and that's normal.
For the next step, we need the two remaining fender mounting bolts and two of the flat, large flat washers that came in the kit. We're just gonna sit them over the top and then we take that last rear fender panel, again with the rough side down. We're gonna feed that in through the top here and then take that bolt, that goes through this slot here, through the other panel and then through the hole in the top here where the ECU mounts. We then take one of our nylock nuts. You will have to push on here a fair bit to get it through. We just want to get that nut started. Once we've got that nut started, we can do the same to the other side. Before we tighten these two up, we're just going to tidy this panel up here. Take your lock, make sure it sits in this slot. And then we're going to take two of the M8 bolts and just start them off in here. Again, we're not going to fully tighten them just like the other ones. We're just going to get them started. So now we can do these all up and do these two up as well. When we refit the seat lock, we're just going to replace one of the bolts with the longer one that came in the kit. That's a Phillips head one and that goes in the back. Before we move on to the rear fender, we're just going to remove these two top hat washers because we won't need those anymore. To disassemble the stock fender, we need to remove this bolt here using our 5mm Allen key and our 10mm socket. Then underneath the fender, we need to remove these three bolts here. And they're done with an eight millimeter socket. And we can then separate the rear fender from the rear guard. So now we want to remove this little bolt here, which is again an eight millimeter socket. And that allows us to remove this little cover, which then gives us access to the indicator connectors underneath. So we're just going to disconnect those. And then we're going to have to take this out to remove the indicators, we just need to undo this bolt here, which is done with a five millimeter Allen key. And we can then simply pull the light out from the side there. And of course, we then do the same to the other side. Before we continue to fit the indicators to the tail tidy, we need to take this loom and cut it halfway between the light here and the intersection here. Now, unfortunately, this is a pre-production bike, so we're unable to cut this one as it needs to go back to the shop. But we've done a separate video just up in the top corner here that will explain the process we use for doing these kinds of connections.
Before we fit the indicators, we need to assemble the tail tidy. We're going to take the brake light bracket and the tail tidy itself. We've got our cable tie, the two countersunk bolts and the two nuts. We're going to start by feeding our cable tie through here. Like so. And then we just want to feed that through so we've got this one nice and close to here. We can then fit this to the tail tidy. Then we're going to take one of our countersunk bolts, run that through there, and then fit one of the nuts to it. We do this to both sides. and then we can tighten those up. This assembly is now ready to fit the indicators to. We're gonna turn it upside down and then we're gonna take our two indicators. Now when we fit these, we just wanna make sure that these are facing down when it's fitted to the bike. So we're going to feed the two wires through here and then straight away we're going to feed these wires through this hole as well. Through there, and that one through there as well. And then run that all the way up. And then we can take the original bolt and bolt the indicator in place. And then we take our five millimeter Allen key to do that one up. And then of course, we do the same to the other side. The last thing to do before we fit this to the bike it's just do this cable tie up and then trim it away. Just so make sure all these wires are coming through here. Get them down nice and flat. And do that up. Just trim that away. And this unit's now ready to fit to the bike. When we position the fender, we just need to take that last little small washer and we're going to place that off the top of this little hole here. And that then positions on the bottom of the thread that holds this locking plate on. Once that's in position, we take a nylock nut and just thread that onto that thread. We're not going to do it up at the moment, just enough so that it hangs there. Using your 5mm Allen key, place the last two bolts in to hold the fender eliminator in place. Do these up tight. We can then fully tighten the M6 nut. We're now ready to plug in the wiring. We're going to plug in the loom that we made earlier into the brake light as per the colouring diagram that we're going to show you on the screen. Plug in the indicators. Finally, plug the loom back into the original plug on the harness. Now normally we would test all our lighting before we went any further, but because this bike hasn't gone through pre-delivery, we can't actually turn the ignition on and start it up. So turn your ignition on, just check your indicators left and right, and make sure that they're on the right side. If they're not, you may have to change the plugs around to get them on the correct side. Also, give your brake light a stab and check that the brake light we've installed is working correctly. Once you're satisfied that that's all working correctly, we can continue. Before we reinstall the seat, we're just going to tidy up some of this wiring here with the remaining cable ties. You'll find there's some holes here that are for this purpose. 
So just run the cable ties through them. And when it comes to this loom, you may have to get creative just to make sure you take up the slack. In there. And then once we're happy with the positioning, take our side cutters and just trim off the excess here. Last step, reinstall the seat. With that done, you can fit your number plate and take her out for a ride. Now it's a wise idea after a few rides, just go over everything, check that all the nuts and bolts are tight. Hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's helped you with your install. If you haven't yet purchased the product and you'd like to, mustardbikes.com. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram, share your pictures on Facebook. We love to see how you've gone. Thanks for watching, until next time. Now we've got everything together, the first step is to take our key and remove the seat. <laughs> Every time. <laughs>